Okay, so this is round two, and we see that we have a number of teams that uh, scored over 400 points. Most teams scored uh, close to 400 or higher this round. And round two is a harder round because it's a building. You're building your company. You're spending a lot of money on factory and equipment, so it's a harder round to really do well. And the teams who've done better this round were coming off year-over-year uh, -year lows from the previous round. And if we look at the uh, gross project, uh, profit margins, we see that profit margins are now, one company has reached the 60 percentile, most companies are in the high 40s or 50 percentile profit margins, which just about where you should be. And then we have some companies down here, two companies that are actually lower profit margins than when you started. You started this simulation at a 40 percent profit margin and these companies have gone backwards, which uh, Investors and owners, everybody hates this. So this is something if you ever, when you graduate from college, you run a company or own your own company, remember profit margins should move forward, not backwards. Now after two rounds, you should be, and I had suggested in um, on the blackboard that you increase, try to increase your profit margins by at least 5% per round, which should bring you, after round two, should bring you a 50 percentile or higher. So the teams below 50 percentile haven't really matched that goal of trying to increase their profit margins by 5% a round. And profit margins are what you're supposed to increase when you own a company, because when you when you own or you're managing a company or running a company, you're supposed to maximize shareholders' wealth. And to do that, you need to increase gross profit margins, which and also operation, also net profit margins. So uh, if we look at stock price, we'll see that the companies, again, who have these companies who have the top profit margins generally also are the companies with the top stock prices because investors reward increasing profit margins with higher stock prices. Uh, I'm just going to go down to total points. So remember, it's, you need 2,500 points. There's some companies after two rounds, they're only 1,000 points away, and they have four more rounds to get to that 1,000 points. Um, but even if you're behind, even if you have less than 1,000 points, you still have four more scoring rounds to add to your score to get to that higher score. Um, so let, let's, go to, let's go directly to the industry charts for this round. And let's look at it more visually. Okay, so let me just rescale this. All right. Okay, so here are the net profits per team. We see that most teams are higher with net profits. I think there's only one team uh, here that are lower net profits from one year to the next. But most teams have increased net profits with the top teams reaching $80 million in net profits are close to the top three teams very close to or above 80 million dollars in net profits uh we have one team here that went from 23 28 million dollars net profits down to 3 million net so that's that's something has to be corrected there it has to be looked into more carefully by that team because you want to every round especially when the industry is growing 20 30 percent per round you need to increase your profit margins your net profit margins by a similar percentage Okay, points per team. You see that round one is an easy round to earn points because you're coming off of um, the previous year of very poor management, very low results. It's sort of like if you were to um, uh, go to school and your last semester was, you know, <clears throat> D's and C's, and the next semester is much easier to do better than that. Where now, if this semester if the first year you had all A's, the second year is harder. How do you really improve that? So that year-over-year year change is what earns you points. So you want to be, we have two companies that lost points. So they should really review what they're doing more closely. But most companies made points, and a lot of companies made in the five to 600 range points, uh, which clearly will put you well past the finish line at the end of the simulation. And remember, even if you did make a super amount of points in round two, round two is generally one of the harder rounds as you're building out your company. If we look at stock price, uh, we have you know, anywhere from one company at $10 all the way to $39 here in stock price. So big, uh, and every different change here in stock price is different decisions that each company has made. Some companies have bought that stock. Some companies have focused on increasing profits and revenues, and they all have a different effect on how you improve your stock price. But by and large, if you want to improve your stock price, you have to do what the majority of businesses are doing. Simultaneously increase profits, increase revenues, and reduce costs. 
and developing a strategy to do that. So if we see sales per team, we see most teams in this grouping here that were able to increase sales dramatically. We have a few teams that sales were, uh, uh, these teams increased sales as well. These team sales were flat. Uh, this team sales actually went down. So questions, why? Uh, if we look at earnings per share, we had two, two companies whose earnings per share went down. That means they basically were destroying profit margins, just disappointing investors, uh, and that really affected their performance as a team. So remember, earnings per share have to keep increasing if you want your company to move forward, just like in the real world. So we have a new uh, industry leader in earnings per share, uh, Powell Motors, followed by last semester's last round's third place is now this round's second place, Precision Motor Works, and then we have a tie dental and pure motors for uh, third in, in earnings per share. Okay. So let's, um, let me go to, what I'm going to do is go to my demo round, my practice game, and give you some advice on how to um, perform better. Now on Blackboard, so on Blackboard, I did leave this announcement uh, about the video from last round and then my uh, suggestions on how to improve performance. And the first one is profit margins is above 40% and try to increase them, increase them 2 to 5% each round. Uh, lower features, increase price. So I give really good specific ways to increase your, 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 your points. And I see a lot of uh, one or two companies email me. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't get my points up. Please look at my game. I look at the game and I said, you're making all the mistakes that I told you not to do in the uh, round hints. So please, before you contact me, um, make sure you watch the videos I'm going to post and read the suggestions I give you about how to improve your score. Because I'm not going to do the game for you or necessarily just spell out what you need to do other than I can't be more direct than this. Uh, so you really have to invest the time in the simulation to do well with it. So one thing I can do is I can review uh, what I, you know, some basic, reinforce some basic advice I've already given. So here um, you guys are, if we're looking at, you know, first thing you should do after round two, you know, everybody's in round three, is look at your overview points. Uh, and it's year over year. So I went from revenues per share of 24 to 33, a 39% increase. I earned 39 points for that. And I was able to increase, um, see my profit margins here, my gross profit margins went down. So I lost points because I allowed my pro gross profit margins to go down. And I did that on purpose last round to show you that if you let your profit margins go down, even if you're at a high position, you're gonna, that's going to affect your points in gross, operational, and net. And that's going to affect all your return on uh, assets and equity and um, all your per share variables are going to be lower too. So here I only made 300 points. Luckily I had a, so I did earn some points from making operational investments and um, having a surplus. So that kind of saved me and I got my 300 points uh, because of some other factors, my debt management. But really it, round two is a round, hard round. But I did do some time to build in round two. So if I'm going into round three, of course what everybody should do is look over their assessments and where they do poorly, read the clues of how to improve your um, game. So uh, this, this is a self-assessment. You're not doing well in the simulation. Read over every category here and absorb every score to figure out where you're not doing well and where you can improve. Uh, review your charts. A very important chart is your performance charts where you go down to the bottom and you see that I did my uh, luxury. I gave up I uh, gave up almost 300 cars I could have sold in luxury, and in sedan, I only sold 3,000, but I could have sold 3,400. So poor forecasting on me cost me the profits of additional, almost additional 600 cars. So I need to take that into account. When I'm forecasting now, I could probably easily go to 3,000 here. This, I could easily go to 4,000. Uh, I should be able to increase this by the percentage increase of truck. And luxury at this level, I should be able to increase luxury at least by 30%. So I should keep that in mind when I'm forecasting the new round. Okay, so I review the charts and then look at my competitors in the industry. What did my competitors do? What are their gross profit margins, their market potential? So I look at the best companies and see how they did better. Okay, so now in the, t in the, in the, um, the sales position here, I remember back that I left off at 53% gross profit margin. So I'm in my sales. I'm going to say, okay, I, I reprogrammed the car here. I'm only at 44%. 
that's going to lose me points. So I'm going to have to go back in. Now, luckily, I have an operational cost reduction of 1800 from last round's investments. So I'm going to have to go back in and do some trimming here of some of my uh, variables uh, to try and... get those profit margins up a little bit. All right, so I wasn't really able to do too much here. I'm going to increase my forecast. Um, 3,500 should be good. So I can't. I didn't get anywhere too far with improving their profit margins, just a little bit on economy. I have to try to make it up on the other vehicles. So here, again, I'm going to try to, I'm going to have to disappoint on some of my features to try and get okay now I'm 56 percent so that's an in increase and I've increased my if I go back to sedan 34 so 4,000 I should be able to make and now truck okay so I'm on my truck and again the profit margin is too low I'm going to have to cut back a bit on some things try to get that profit margin up above 53%. Now luxury, okay, so luxury, let's see, left off here, 22. Uh, so I think I, with a, I think I could do about 28 next round. Uh, but again, I want to get these profit margins up. Okay, so 60%. So this should help definitely get me a back. Uh, this luxury will help push up my overall gross profit margins for this area. Remember, reflective observations are needed for our team competition because uh, we're not working on this because of a short summer session. Now, if we go to, um, I'm going to have to start working on the marketing still. But remember, here are our marketing ranges which have gone up as competition has increased, as the markets have increased. So I know that truck is the most important uh, area to put money in to sell trucks. It's what, you know, uh, advertising is what really drives the truck sales. So I'm going to have to go in and rescope out my advertising. It's going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause while I do that so it's not to waste your time. Okay, so now I'm in production, and I see that I'm going to need some production plants here good on these two levels nope I'm gonna need a new one here so I'm gonna have to invest in that's gonna be expensive I'm gonna spend 30 million on that to get to now another trick is you don't want to have an excess or shortage on any of your cars you want to make the exact amount you're forecasting uh, otherwise I should if I'm going to uh, do something say like that and have an ex I should plan it into my forecast not um, develop excess inventory on purpose because I want my inventory to be as small as possible uh, so it reduces my overall size of my assets and I get better turnover on assets, better return on assets. So I've matched my forecast. And I had this uh, inventory, excess inventory here for economy and truck that I didn't sell that I'll try and resell, I guess remodel and resell this year. So so my one of the problems I had last year on my all my asset there uh, my asset variables on the overview points here, the return on the assets to last the turnover, was that this excess inventory created a big, bigger assets that I than I anticipated, which you know hurt me. Okay, so I'm going to uh, make some more operational investments because this is going to help me to reduce my costs next round uh, and earn me some points this round. So I'm going to make some operational investments and submit that. And remember, what you do in the practice rounds isn't necessarily going to be exactly duplicated in the team competition because the team competition, you're against live, very smart students. And they're going to make a very, you know, so you're competing against them for market share. So you're never going to get the same results you get in the practice games in the real live team competition because the practice games are against computer players. The team competition is against other student players who can, you know, if they make better moves than you, they're going to steal your sales just like in the real world. Okay, so let's go down here and see. I have a pretty big surplus here. I have a nice surplus 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, buy back some stock and retire some debt to help my scores in those areas. Okay, and I'm going to process my round and, and see what my results are. Okay, so did my strategy work of increasing, focusing on profits and increasing? It sure did. 576 points is a great score, and I was able to make some points in my uh, debt ratios and my profit margins. I was able to get it from 53 to 57, and I was able to improve my operating and net. Operating was improved by more effective advertising spending, and my net was improved uh, as a trickle down. Because you, you can never get a higher operational or net profit margin than your gross profit margin. So it all starts with gross. That's why you focus on that. Uh, let's see. My assets, uh, I got better scores on my, my uh, earnings per share, my return on assets, my market capitalization. My forecasts were a little tighter. And I got uh, I had a surplus here. And I had operational investments I made. So I got my 561 points. And now when I go into build... For uh, when I start round four, I have $3,600 of operational cost reductions, which will help me to maintain my profit margins. I have to make sure that when I build my round four, which we'll see next video, that I can get my profit margin above 57. Okay, so that's, that's this is my video, a quick recap of how the teams have done in the simulation and a quick uh, reinforcement of what I know about running a company to improve results. Uh, which seems pretty much on point with what you have to do here to improve results. So I hope you find this video useful. And if you want, again, if you want to increase your score, you got to watch uh, in the Blackboard, you got to watch my review videos and you got to uh, read uh, my suggestions for increase, increasing your score. And you got to play those practice games. And you got to, you know, just don't play round one over and over and over again. You got to go round one, round two, round three uh, to see what how your different decisions affect your scores moving forward and it's not an even game you don't earn the same points every round there's not you know one no each round has a different number as far as um you know what points are good like i say round one is easy round two is harder round three is a little easier uh so it really depends and if you don't do your planning right and you don't do plan for the future if you don't uh, make your investments for the future then it's going to be harder and harder to hit those goals in later rounds Okay, so I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, keep uh, learning and keep uh, running those practice rounds and uh, reviewing what your class competitors have done to improve your game and compete and get a higher score. Okay, talk to you soon. Take care.